John Adams was one of the most outspoken critics of Britain's excessive tax policies on the colonists, including the Sugar Act, Tea Act, Stamp Act, and Townsend Acts. Adams wrote numerous newspaper stories and propaganda pieces to protest the British taxation without representation. John joined forces with his distant cousin, Samuel Adams, to protest these British policies. On March 5, 1770, British soldiers fired on and killed five colonists in the Boston Massacre, which fueled anti-British public opinion. Did you know that John Adams defended, yes, defended, the eight British soldiers who massacred the colonists? So why did Adams defend the colonists when no one else would? He did so to ensure they received a fair trial. Adams argued the British soldiers fired in self-defense, and he succeeded in getting six of the eight soldiers acquitted. Pretty amazing. Following the Boston Massacre, Adams was an important figure in both the First and Second Continental Congress in 1774 and 1775. He sat on nearly 90 committees during the Second Continental Congress, including the committee to draft the Declaration of Independence. After some arm twisting, Adams persuaded Thomas Jefferson to write the Declaration. Lucky Thomas Jefferson! In 1789, John Adams lost a close election to George Washington making Adams the first vice president of the United States. John Adams was not happy. He called the vice presidency the most insignificant office that ever the invention of man contrived or his imagination conceived. Adams lost again to Washington in the 1792 election. Adams' main job as vice president for the eight years was to break ties in the Senate. Lucky John. Third time is the charm. In 1796, Adams won a close election against Thomas Jefferson to become the second president of the United States with 71 electoral votes. Jefferson, by default, became the vice president with 68 electoral votes. While both men were from opposing parties, Adams tried to bring Jefferson into his administration to shape foreign policy, but Jefferson would have none of it. One of the most notable events during the Adams administration was the quasi-war with France from 1798 to 1800. France was harassing American ships on the open seas. Adams sent diplomats to Paris for negotiations, but the French demanded bribes. Congress and the American public were outraged and wanted to declare war on France. Despite the hostilities, Adams didn't declare war on France. The Quasi-War was the first time that American neutrality, which had been championed by Washington as president, found itself under attack. Wow, that was a close one. As tensions rose with the French during the Quasi-War, President Adams and the Federalist Congress took extra steps to repress foreigner rights in America with the Alien and Sedition Acts. These laws made it easier for immigrants to be deported, restricted new immigrant voting rights, and put restrictions on the media speaking out against Adams and the Federalist government. Adams was pressured to sign the Alien and Sedition Acts in 1798 and later considered it his biggest political blunder in office. Ouch! Adams lost his re-election in 1800 by a few electoral votes to none other than Thomas Jefferson. The election campaign was brutal and nasty. Before leaving, the Federalist Congress passed the Judiciary Act of 1801, which increased the number of federal judges that Adams could fill. Adams spent his last days in office filling the judicial posts with Federalists, which came to be known as the Midnight Appointments. No surprise, but Thomas Jefferson was furious. Despite being longtime rivals, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson repaired their relationship in the final years. The pair made up and wrote frequently for the last 10 years of their lives. Did you know that Adams and Jefferson died on the same day? July 4th, 1826. It was the 50-year anniversary to the day of the Declaration of Independence signing. Pretty amazing stuff. <laughs>